Hey everybody, Ben from X Geeks. Welcome back to Call of Cthulhu. This is Chapter 8, Riverside Institute. So it looks like we're going back. In the Nameless Bookstore, P.S. traced the trail of an attempted burglary. He discovered that Charles Hawkins was behind the attempt. P.S. opened the bookseller's safe to find what the latter and Sarah Hawkins had hidden there. A book covered in human skin lied inside. When he opened it, his mind was projected into another body. Okay, so we're going to be someone else. That's interesting. So, someone else at the Riverside Institute. The doctor, perhaps? Or a patient? Dr. Colden, this man's condition is deteriorating. Oh, a Dr. Colden! What says Dr. Fuller? It's his patient, after all. Hello, hello, hello. He's busy. What's the harbour master doing Fitzroy? there? He specifically asked us not to bother him when that's the case. Oh, of course. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Blake, can you hear me? I'm Dr. Colden. We'll take care of you. There's nothing we can do. I tried talking to him. He's catatonic. Very well. I'll examine him. So, what's happening there? Looks very uh, animated. His skin shows abnormal loss of color and seems dried out. Like He's totally dehydrated. Sucking the His life out. His fingertips and toes seem to feature a slight ring under the skin tender at the touch slightly sticky Eesh. severe malnutrition swollen abdomen with traces of petechia <sighs> doesn't seem like an edema slight protuberances seem to indicate the presence of a foreign body 30 year old subject severe hypothermia Erythematous papules around the eyes and eardrums. Necrosed palubral tissue. Lord, this smell. So, Doctor, an opinion? I'm not sure I have the necessary knowledge to treat this man. Don't say that. You're our most worthy doctor, after Dr. Fuller. Some of his symptoms are beyond my comprehension. What did you find? I see signs of hypodermoclysis. Maybe we'll start, uh, start obvious. When was his last IV? He's constantly under perfusion. I've even gone beyond the recommended dose to no avail. And you won't believe me, but... When we bathed him earlier... He seemed to feel better? Yes. Like he needs an aquarium, not a perfusion. Hmm. But that doesn't explain yeah. his condition. In spite of the muscle contractions, his arms seem limp. Yes. Looks like an option just to kind of exhaust all the, uh, the dialogue options. If there is a bone in this arm, it's softer than that of a newborn baby. What about his cranium? He's slowly it's turning into a squid. It does seem like the skull of a baby. This place is very dusty. Look at these sticky rings growing at his fingertips. What Don't like sticky ring. I'm sure you'll find an explanation. You have to. Did you examine his abdomen? It would seem there's something inside. He hasn't eaten in days. Are you certain it's not an edema? No. Can't you recognize an edema? Pushing with your finger won't leave a trace. And look at these bumps. <laughs> it's not like he could be pregnant. Whatever it is. Oh, this could man he? Has something inside him that shouldn't be there. We should operate on him at once. Dr. Fuller said not to worry. That the edema would go away by itself. Yeah, well, we should be you listening know, to me and not the very I'm sketchy not sure Dr. Dr. Fuller. Fuller is telling the truth. No. I almost don't believe it myself, but these symptoms are not those usually associated with the human species. What do you mean? Don't tell me you believe in extraterrestrials. No. This poor man is from our world, all right. But his body is undergoing unnatural mutations. And this transformation is killing him. His body simply can't cope. Where could he have gotten such an infection? Uh, look who's coming over. Dr. Colden, may I know what you're doing to my patient? What I'm doing? How about what you've done to him? Let us calm down, my dear Marie. I don't appreciate your tone, nor your insinuations. 
I've earned right, him back off, what pal. I do to all my patients, provide him with the best available care. Your imagination is without limit. It's your homemade drug again, is it not? Those people are not your guinea pigs. There, there. Could be to do with that gas that what was exposed to when was in the institute last time. State? I've seen suction cups on his fingers. His falling body temperature. His dehydration. Had I only read the report, you know what I would have concluded, Doctor. Do I? Tell me anyway. I'm curious. He's no longer human. These are the attributes of an animal. Fascinating. An animal, you say? Could you be more precise? Cephalopod, perhaps. <laughs> this amuses you. Your reaction does. I know you are thirst for knowledge, Doctor. It's your innocent worries for this man that have you overreacting. Oh, because I'm a woman, so I'm overreacting. Dick. I have to protect my discovery. These people owe me their life, but the world isn't ready yet. It will be, in time. I will not let you do this. You disappoint me, Marie, but I still have hope you'll one day share my point of view. In the meantime, take care of your own patients and try not to forget who you're dealing with. Is that a threat? Was that a threat? <laughs> what did he mean? It was a warning. It Dr. was a warning. Is this institution's founder and one of our profession's most influential voices. My word is of no weight against his. If I continue to protest, I will only ruin my reputation and career. It's scandalous. Can't we do anything? Is there no evidence of his crimes? Now she's very keen to help. And I don't trust anyone <laughs> in this place. Um, so let's just play it cool. I disapprove of Fuller's methods, but his treatments have saved more lives than I can count. And Mr. Blake? You said yourself he was dying. I don't know what to think for now. What I'm sure of is that Fuller is hiding something from us. And I need to know what that is before I take a chance exposing him. And where would you find those? In his office? Yep. What if you get caught? I'd rather not think about that. I'm counting on your discretion. Of course, Doctor. You can count on me. I'll keep Mum. Right, I'm saying right now she's going to betray us. Everybody says it. She's a witch. An old hag. I didn't make this up. Elizabeth? You alright? Why is this room in such a state? Because, as always, I'm cleaning it by myself. And the water was once again shut off this morning. I had to bother Mrs. Donovan again, giving her a new excuse to belittle me. Come now. Don't yeah, let just, you know, soldier on. We'll keep I'm doing trying, what you need to do. Doctor, I'm trying. Sometimes I imagine she shuts down the water herself. Her time is much too precious for these kind of petty games. Anyway, I've learned my lesson. Courage, Elizabeth. Thank you, Doctor. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Uh, nowhere. Dr. Colden. Mrs. Donovan. Nobody goes into Dr. Fuller's office. But rest assured, I'll tell him you came by. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I will tell him, nonetheless. So, I've got to distract Donovan and cut off the water. Okay. No, you're pulling my leg. I'm not joking. Nothing to see here. She's alone in the back. We've been waiting to be restocked for and weeks. She still says nothing to that old witch, Donovan. Oh, listen to the way you talk. The doses prescribed by Fuller are far too high. You naughty girl. <laughs> and the answer is no. You can imagine that she doesn't dare say a thing. That silly goose lets her sleep. She recently came back from the surgical block. She's stable. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney. Hello? We have the boiler key. The key to the boiler room. 
All I have to do is shut off the water and hope Donovan takes the bait. Dr. Colden, he are at last. This patient was again brought up to I'm the psychiatric from New York. wing. We've been following the treatment you prescribed, but the dyskusia persists and he's lost a great deal of weight. Whoa. We haven't been able to move him. The stress makes him hyperallergic. Sir, I am going to examine you. Do you understand? Inject him with a dose of pentobarbital, intramuscular, so that I can conduct the clinical examination. He bit his lips so much, they're still bleeding. White froth, evidently because of such drooling. His binds left bloody wounds. So, doctor, what should we do with this patient? Um... I mean, I don't know if he's been mistreated. You did good work. The tranquilizer is kicked in. Now you can disinfect and bandage his wounds. Thank you, Doctor. And as to his weight loss? I'll prescribe an antifungal treatment for his dysgusia. In the meantime, feed him intravenously. It'll be done. Okay. Simple as that. Don't know what that actually uh, accomplished. So this main reception. Hey. Ethan. Marie, I... What are you doing here? I'm waiting for my medication, of course. Why? Medication? You're not here for treatment, right? <laughs> no. Am I so obvious? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Okay, that look right. Okay, because from a distance, that looks really creepy. This man, Edward Pierce. Whoa! His file is incomplete. What did Fuller do to him? Okay, I was gonna say like, is this before or after, or like right now? But interesting. Okay. Watch out for the water, Doctor. Okay, so that's the storage room. Just leave you in there. The answers must be hidden in Fuller's office. She's a witch, an old hag. I didn't make this up, and I'm the one who pays. So I've got to find the boiler room. Ah. Close the door behind me. Stop fast. I can't shut this with my bare hands. I need a tool. Okay. Where are we going to get a tool from? Um, a tool. What's in here? Monkey wrench. Oh, so the dude, the dude was in there wiping. Okay. Oh, cool. Nice stroke of luck. Like, I don't think it makes a difference that I'm like shutting the door behind me, like someone's gonna like, catch me, but you never know. I feel guilty about Elizabeth, but I need the diversion. So she's not disappeared yet. Oh! Go back to Elizabeth. Um, well, which one was that? She was in the men's bathroom. You're Elizabeth, right? Dr. Colden, might there be a problem with the water? Uh-huh. I was about to mention it. It seems it's been cut off yet again. I can't take this, Marie. I feel I'm gonna burst. It's not your fault if we have defective plumbing. And yet, I'm the one who gets punished because I'm gonna have to square off with that annoying old witch. Courage, Elizabeth. Here we go. And hold your tongue this time. 
Oh, here we go. Why go that way? Just go through here. Mrs. Donovan? Oh. I'm busy. Alright, now's our chance. Now's our chance. At last. The missing files must be hidden here. Okay, so where 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 where? Okay. Can't seem to open anything. What? The Stendhal Syndrome. Of course. This is where Fuller found his diagnosis for Francis Sanders. Right. Something is wrong with these masks. It's some sort of puzzle. Okay. So I'm guessing we've got I've unlocked something. <laughs> Patient files. No idea. <laughs> no idea I did that, but okay. Just thought, yeah, they were gonna be facing the same way. Conclusions. Session number seventeen. Patient? Sarah Hawkins. The patient appears to have finally accepted the illusory nature of what she calls the mythos. It goes without saying that these peculiar illusions are the price that comes with representation. Okay, so... Whoa, why is there a shoe in there? Why is Ethan on medication? File. Why does Dr. Fuller write psychological reports about Sarah Hawkins? First, I presumed that her blood was the key. But I found nothing to explain Mrs. Hawkins' abilities. I mean, that shoe's got to be a clue, surely. Poor souls downstairs are not Fuller's only subjects. Then or not. James came. I'm great that Charles was keeping secrets from him. I presume that he will try to break into the basement sooner or later. Basement. I am prepared. I'm determined the shoe's gonna be something. <laughs> Hawkins, Fitzroy, and Fuller. What is the connection between these three? The sheer proves that I had the presence of mind to set the mall in the basement. When all the fuss about the Hawkins incident finally comes to an end, I will dispose of her belongings. In the meantime, they must remain hidden in plain sight. In plain sight, being the shoe. Finally! Sarah Hawkins is the connection. I must go back to the basement. Okay, so do we have to go back this way? There's nothing to see. Um, so we need to go down. So, oh god, I've come the long way. This is where we passed out on the steps the last time, when we was Pierce. Whoa. Ah. Ah, now that's the Marie that I know. 
I knew I could count on your scientific curiosity. It's time to show you what you were so eager to discover. <gasps> Whoa! Okay, so she's in trouble. Whoa, who's this guy? If you're gonna shoot. Oh, the bookseller. It's his shop. Talk, filthy thief! Oh, I swear I'll shoot! All right. Take a minute to look around. Everything points to Charles Hawkins. He's dead! No. He was here for a very specific item. Oh. No. Oh, as simple well, as that. Why was it in the safe? Have you read it? Answer the question. How foolish of you! Now you won't be able to escape his will. What did it show you? She went into Fuller's office. She was looking for Sarah Hawkins' corpse. Sarah Hawkins, you say? Let's go back to the start, shall we? Whose life did the Necronomicon choose to show you? Dr. Colden. She was at the Riverside Institute. She's in danger. I have to go. Wait! No one knows the occult better than me. You might need my help. Um, yeah, sure. Come along. All right. All right. This will affect I your might destiny. Need you after all. Perfect. Let's meet later at the Hawkins mansion. Now go! Rescue the doctor! Thank you, Drake. Wow. There we go. We've got a partner.